Hi, welcome to beekeeping. Let's go over some basic beekeeping equipment you'll need to get started. First, you'll need to order what's called a bee package. This is typically a three pound crate of bees with a newly mated queen. Now, the queen is inside of a queen cage and can't mingle with the rest of the worker bees. The worker bees need time to accept their new queen. Now the advantage of starting out with a package of bees is that the beekeeper will have a smaller number of bees to deal with. And since the colony is not established yet, they have nothing to protect. So they're typically less aggressive than an established colony. And that gives you more time to learn how to work with them. Now with the package, your queen will be a first year newly mated queen. And this will help you with successfully overwintering your colony since your queen won't need to be replaced. And then finally with the package of bees, a new beekeeper will be able to watch how the colony develops and grows. In the beginning, it'll be easy to move your frames around. And over time, the frames are gonna get weighed down with honey, pollen, and brood, not to mention stuck together with propolis, which is bee glue. After you order your package of bees, you'll need to start preparing. Now new beekeepers typically purchase a bee suit, which consists of a full body suit and veil along with gloves as you see pictured here. More experienced beekeepers will use only a veil and gloves or just a veil. But the rule for new beekeepers is to always wear at least a veil to protect your face. When you get your package of bees, where will they live? Most new beekeepers purchase a standard Langstroth hive. Now this is the standard beekeeping hive developed by L.L. Langstroth in the mid 1800s. And what made the Langstroth hive special is that the frames that the bees live on can be removed for collecting honey and then placed right back into the hive. Prior to the Langstroth hive, the entire colony would be destroyed to collect honey. So let's start from the top and work our way down. First, the telescoping lid provides weather protection. It's typically made out of wood with a sheet metal top. And the corners wrap around the box under it. And during hive inspections, the metal part of the lid is a great spot to rest your smoker. Next, we have the inner cover, and that's a piece of wood with a hole in the center. Now, just like humans put foam insulation around their windows to keep out drafts, Bees collect tree resin to create a bee glue called propolis, and they use this propolis to fill in the air gaps in their hive. So the purpose of the inner cover is to prevent the telescoping cover from getting glued down with propolis. Next, we have the honey super. That's a shallow box. And that's where honeybees store their excess honey that they produce. Now, honey super typically comes with a hive kit but you likely won't need to use it until your second year of beekeeping. The first year, your new colony will be spending all their resources in building wax foundation and growing their colony numbers. And they usually can't produce excess honey until the second year. And then next we have the deeper box, which is called a brood chamber or a deep. The brood chamber houses the nest where the brood, who are the baby bees, are kept. Now each honey super and brood chamber has 10 frames that hang inside and each frame has a flat portion called a foundation. The foundation, typically it's plastic, is where the bees deposit wax to build out the familiar honeycomb cells. And those honeycomb cells are used to contain the baby bees, pollen, nectar, or honey. Now the reason why honey supers are shallower than the brood chamber is because when they get filled with honey they become very heavy and a deep box full of honey would be almost impossible for the average person to lift. Now the last piece of equipment is called the bottom board. Now this is the entrance and exit for the bees. The bees will fly to eliminate bodily waste, gather resources, move to a new hive, or in the case of male bees and uh, queen bees, they'll mate. Now here's a brood chamber, otherwise known as a deep or deep hive body with 10 visible frames. And here's a bottom board with a brood chamber sitting on top of it, and then an inner cover sitting on top of the brood chamber. 
Each piece of the hive sits on top of the next piece. There's no need to screw the pieces or bind the pieces together. The bees will glue a lot of the items together with propolis. And when it's time for you to examine the hive, you'll use a special hive tool to pry the pieces apart. Here's what your starter hive will look like. There's a bottom board, a brood chamber with frames and foundation inside, an inner cover inside, and the telescoping lid. So you'll start out with a small package of bees around 10,000, and the goal is to fill your entire brood chamber with a queen, some drones, and thousands of worker bees. A few months after you start your colony, when you remove the telescoping lid and pry open the inner cover, Hopefully you'll have bees covering all 10 frames like in this photo. We've discussed the package of bees, the bee suit, the hive, so let's look at some other accessories you'll need. First, there's the bee brush. You can use it to gently wipe bees off of a frame or off of jars or anything else you need to take a look at. Just make sure you never brush your queen. You'll also need what's called an entrance reducer. Now this normally comes with the purchase of a bottom board. The entrance reducer allows you to decrease the size of the entrance and exit of the hive. You'll want to temporarily reduce the size of the entrance when you first install your package of bees to help them see their new hive as a comfy new home that they'll want to stay in. And as you learn beekeeping, you'll discover other times throughout the year that you'll need to reduce the entrance. You'll also need a queen excluder. Now this grid, which can be plastic or metal, it has holes in it that prevents a queen or a drone, which is a male bee, from passing through it. The workers are small enough that they can pass through the excluder. You'll need to lay down the queen excluder between the brood chamber and the bottom board for a week or so after the queen is released. This will prevent the queen from leaving the new hive and if the queen can't leave the hive, then the workers won't leave, and instead, they'll make the hive their new home. You'll also need feeders. Now, beekeepers use feeders to encourage the building of wax foundation and to feed bees who might otherwise starve. You're introducing a package of bees to a new hive that has no wax cells in it. Until the bees build wax cells, they have no way to store food and the queen has nowhere to lay eggs. So when you get a new package of bees, you must feed them. The black object in the upper left is called a frame feeder. Fill it with sugar syrup. Now remember, in our brood chamber, we have 10 frames hanging. So take a frame from the very edge of the brood chamber, remove it, and replace it with a frame feeder full of sugar syrup. Now, during cold nights, the bees won't be able to reach this frame feeder, but during the warm days, they'll be able to do a lot of feeding. Now, to ensure the bees have an energy source during cold nights or days, use mason jars filled with sugar syrup. Punch holes in the lid, place the jars upside down with one jar over the center hole of the inner cover and the other jar next to it. Put them both on risers, like you see in the photo here. Then put an empty brood chamber with no frames. Put that empty box right over the mason jars. And then put the telescoping lid on top. Using a hive tool is important. There are two different types here and both work well. You can choose whichever one you're most comfortable with. They're used to break apart the pieces of the hive that the bees have propolized or stuck together and the hive tool will help you lift up the frames as well. You won't need a smoker on the day you install your bee package, but you will need one for future hive inspections after the installation. The smoker is a metal can that's empty inside, and the fuel you choose, whether it be pine needles, pine chips, animal bedding, denim, it should be non-toxic. Before you get your bees, Practice lighting your smoker and keeping it lit for at least 10 minutes. And after a few times practicing this, you'll start to get the hang of it. Other helpful items include a pen and paper to take notes, 
a permanent marker in case you want to mark the frames paint pens for marking the queen after maybe a couple months after you've established your colony a flathead screwdriver especially for opening your bee package painters tape and a five gallon bucket to store everything a five gallon bucket is easy to carry to and from your hive before you get your bees make sure you have your hive assembled and painted and make sure you finish painting everything at least a week prior to the arrival of your bees you don't want lingering fumes to chase your colony away never paint inside the hive only on the exterior portions now humans can easily relocate to a different home but you can't pick up a beehive and just easily relocate a colony within your yard therefore make sure you have your hive set up in its permanent location preferably out of sight of your neighbors and passers-by and also make sure it's properly supported your hive is going to get very heavy over time as the bees fill it up with brood and honey Here's a list of things you'll need to get started in beekeeping. You can email CherokeeBeekeepersClub at gmail.com to get a copy of this list. Congratulations on starting your beekeeping adventure! Beekeeping is fun and challenging, so make sure to attend your beekeeping club meetings, read books, and learn all you can to have the best experience. And thank you!